Did you ever wish you had someone to tell you the truth about what it takes to run a successful business and live a fulfilling life? Well, my friend, you've come to the right place. So grab your favorite caffeinated jolt or cocktail and your courage and get ready to get to work. I'm Janessa Borges, a therapist, mindset coach for entrepreneurs, and a feisty Latina from Miami. I've been referred to as a trailblazing powerhouse with relentless energy and outside-the-box ideas, and I'm determined to teach you the exact tools you need to stop settling and start kicking some serious derriere. What do you say? Are you in? Then let's get started. Welcome to the Success Mindset for Entrepreneurs podcast. Today, I want to talk to you about why quitting is never an option, why you never take no for an answer. I recall in high school, approximately sophomore year economics class, I typically hate history, but for some reason, it really interested me, the concept of supply and demand. It was the first time I really remember connecting having a dream for a business and success. Our teacher was talking to us about a student who attended Yale and the assignment was to come up with a project to create something, imagine something, envision it, and then create a plan, how you're going to execute it, what it's going to take, supply, demand, how it's going to work, how to make it, make it effective, essentially almost like a business plan, right? From creation, um, imagination to execution. And this young student thought about an overnight delivery service. And from my recollection, the, my teacher told me that in this scenario, the professor, who was none other than a professor at the infamous university, Yale, Ivy League, didn't think it was a good idea. He just, he thought it was ridiculous. And from my recollection, and we'll have to fact check me, is that he failed. He failed the student for having completed the assignment, which was imagining a business and creating a vision for it and coming up with a plan to execute. So this young man completed his project and he received an F for executing his project because the professor just didn't think it was a good idea. It was a fantasy. But here's the thing. That didn't stop him. Can you imagine how crushing that must have felt? A prestigious university professor saying your idea is ridiculous and unattainable. Can you imagine? Well, this young man's name was Frederick Smith. He was from Mississippi. And he didn't stop there. He didn't stop at that F. He didn't stop at that negative commentary from his professor. He wasn't deterred, although his father died at age four. He was raised by his mother and uncles. He had a crippling bone disease as a small boy. All things that could have stopped him, all items in his life, all trauma, all history that could have served as excuses for him. And here's the thing. He persevered. Well, that man in the company I'm talking about is FedEx, you know, FedEx that we see all around town, the infamous FedEx. It wasn't easy. Um, There's even a story I found where he had to do extreme things sometimes to keep the company afloat. So one of the examples of this is he needed a crucial business loan. It was denied and he took the company's last $5,000 to Las Vegas and he won $27,000 gambling at Blackjack, and it covered a $24,000 fuel bill that the company had. It kept the company alive for an extra week. So he didn't stop when things were challenging. He didn't stop when somebody said, that's ridiculous. He kept pushing forward. He didn't have his life circumstances serve as excuses for why he couldn't succeed. I want to make sure that you understand that if every time things get hard, or we don't hear what we want to hear, like great job, wow, fantastic, inspirational, that's amazing. We can't quit. I find that being an entrepreneur is about resilience, determination, relentless perseverance, and the strength to continue to get up when things don't go your way. 
We're allowed to be discouraged. We're allowed to feel down. But I will tell you over and over again, it's not about quitting. Quitting is not an option. It's about pivoting your idea. It's about pivoting your ICA. It's about pivoting your program. It's about creating a new lead magnet. It's about stepping outside of the box. It's about thinking differently. It's about connecting in a different way. You can't just go into this world of entrepreneurship and quit when it gets hard. Or you can say, I've given it a year or I've given it six months. Listen, I know it's exhausting. I know it's tiring. I came from a long line of entrepreneurs. I've been an entrepreneur for over 10 years. And there are things that I try that don't do well. And I pivot. There are things that do extremely well that I don't always love. But I never quit. And I think that for a lot of people, that might be the definition of of insanity. But Again, my whole definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting something different. So my whole thing is I don't do the same thing. I do it in a different way. I come up with a new plan. Consistency, continuity through when everyone else fails is what will bring you success. I'm going to repeat that for you. Consistency, continuity throughout the process when everybody else fails, is what will bring you success. Sticking around past when everybody else quits, being that constant force, that constant voice, that constant go-to, that is what brings you success. There's always the exception, right? That Instagram famous person, the person who knocked it out of the park. We see so many people on social media. We see so many people, you know, actresses. The world has changed leaps and bounds. There's no denying that. And there are a lot of people that do have success, but not everybody has success in the same way. You're not maybe going to have 5 million followers on Instagram. That's okay. You're maybe not going to have a lot of people on your email list. That's okay. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. It's not about how many people are on your list. It's about how many people know, like, and trust and want to hear from you. I don't care if your list has 5,000 people if you're getting a 2% open rate. I don't care if you have a Facebook group full of 1,300 people if you're getting four people engaging with you. It doesn't matter how big it is. It's the impact that you're making. And I found this quote recently. I don't know where I bump into it. It's, I looked it up because I had to. It's by Larry Page, and it says, good ideas are always crazy until they're not. So I'm going to repeat that again. Good ideas are always crazy until they're not. The point being, and in case to break that down for you, is all ideas are just like that FedEx project. They're in your mind. They're envisioned. They're imagined. Nobody else has probably had the same idea, and if they have, they haven't executed it. And if you haven't heard about it, they haven't done it well, right? Or not well enough or haven't been consistent themselves. Everything sounds crazy until it's not. So I can't imagine, I'm horrible with history and dates, but at one point, there was no electricity. There were candles. Before that, there were no candles. Cars, right? A plane, a plane that gets you somewhere fast, we couldn't even imagine a man flying until the airplane was invented. We didn't have running water in our homes until somebody thought about bringing plumbing in. Everything around you, just look around you right now. Look at what you're listening to. You're listening to my voice that was pre recorded on a microphone in my studio. And you're listening to it on a device that was created by somebody else that is allowing you to receive my voice and my message. And I am so humbled and grateful and I'm going to give a million shout outs. But there are people listening to this in New Zealand and Australia and Canada, all over the U.S., in Italy, in France, in Belgium. I see you and you hear me because of technology, because somebody had a dream had an idea that was crazy until it wasn't, until it's reality. And that's what you have to remember about your dreams. 
you have to remember that you have to keep pushing through, that it's not going to be easy, that it's going to be challenging, that there are going to be moments where you're disappointed. There are going to be moments where you're resentful. There are moments where you're going to compare yourself to others and wonder why they're doing well and why you're not. There are moments where you're going to be tempted to quit. There are moments where you feel like you're chasing your tail and spinning in circles. That's the moment you take a step back. You allow yourself a couple of days to sulk. You go back to the drawing board and you pivot. That doesn't mean you quit on an idea. That means you redesign it, whether it's how to deliver it, how you're marketing it, you perfect it, you tweak it, you don't quit. You do not quit. Everybody that you admire, I promise you, I want you to search their story. I recently went through a program. It's called Digital Course Academy with Amy Porterfield. I first connected through a podcast, right? I started listening to her just like you're listening to me. And her story, I ended up because I was so invested in what she had to share and the knowledge that she had to teach that I took her course, right, on creating digital courses. And I created my own digital course. And now I help other entrepreneurs in addition to helping them when they're feeling stuck and they need to pivot, how to live launch their programs effectively and execute. Because so many people reach this point where they have this dream and they don't know how to apply it. And the reason I share this with you is because when she first started this program called Digital Course Academy, at that time she named it something else, she had a lot of success working with others and helping others fulfill their dreams. But when she started, if again, don't quote me, but my recollection is the first time she launched her program, and remember she teaches others how to launch their programs, I think she made like $260. And she thought she was going to make thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. And that's what she teaches her students, how to not make the same mistakes that she made. The same mistakes that she made. We all make mistakes. We all learn. The difference is how you pivot, whether you decide you're going to grow and you're going to learn from the mistakes and move forward and push forward or where you're going to say, I've put enough into this. There's nothing left of me. This hobby isn't paying me. And this is a whole other conversation we'll save for another day. But if you're treating your business as a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. When you treat your business with the respect and the love that it deserves, it will pay you as such. You're hearing this today, and I know this is connecting with you because I've been in your shoes. What I will say is what I find the differences between myself and a lot of people that I meet and a lot of entrepreneurs or failed entrepreneurs is that I don't take no for an answer. I can't take no for an answer. In fact, and I know everybody's not like this, when you tell me no, I look you square in the face and I say, okay. And then do you know what I do? I go into my brain, I go into my office, and I spend hours and days and weeks, and months, and I figure out a way to make the no a yes. No to me is a challenge of finding a way to making sure it happens because no is not an option for me. And if you don't know my story, and I've shared a little bit before, and I'll give you a little snippet of it now, I came from a family that didn't take no for an answer. I came from a family that had to, felt that they had to do the best thing for their families, and they fled a government that wasn't healthy. They fled a government that took things away from them. And I share this with you because one of my grandfathers came by himself and left my grandmother behind, it was agreed upon, and left his daughters alone. My mom was one year old when he left. She was a baby. And they were without him for a year and he was alone and he shared his story with me. And I've written scholar projects about it when I was doing my undergrad and he survived and his wife survived and my mom and her sister survived because he didn't say no, because they pushed through. He came to the U.S. by himself. He set up what he needed to do. And then he, the second he landed, started 
asking the government to help him. He wanted to have his wife and his children come with them. He wanted to take care of them, but the conditions where he was living were so he sensed the temperature and the environment and he knew it wasn't safe and it wasn't sustainable. And he wanted more for his family. He wanted more for his wife. He wanted more for his daughters. And we lost him last year. He was an incredible man. But at the end of his life, what he had accomplished, he wanted to go back to his country that he loved so much. But he gave us freedom. He gave us education. He gave us passion. He taught us how to work hard and not quit. And at the end, he came with nothing. Like my grandparents were literally stripped of their jewelry and their money and their belongings. They took the clothes on their back and they came with nothing. And they started from scratch with no career and no language. And he died peacefully in his home in his late 90s after having taken care of his family, his daughters going through college, his grandchildren independent, his great-grandchildren having been born, him supporting us throughout our entire journey. He made sure we were educated and good people and humble and loving and determined. And I share this with you because we can take our circumstances and use them as excuses or we can persevere and we cannot take no for an answer. Because when my grandfather wanted to leave, when he wanted to send for his family, he was told no. And he did not quit. And I have the letters. I found the letters after he passed away that he kept by his bedside of him pleading. And he didn't just send for my grandmother and my mom and his other daughter. He sent for family members. He sent for friends. He sent for strangers. He fought past what he wanted for himself. He wanted to do for others. And he's not in any history books. And you'll never know his name. But he made a difference in the lives of so many people because he didn't take no for an answer. And my other grandfather and grandmother, the same thing. They came with nothing. They came with six children in a new country with no language. And their stories are powerful. And the reason I share them with you is because I think it's in my blood. I just think it's in my blood. I think it's in my body. It's like electricity. I do not take no for an answer. And I want to challenge you today. Never take no for an answer when it comes to your life, when it comes to your business. Always push through. Because if you stick with it, if you pivot, if you grow, if you learn, if you get the support that you need, if you give it your all and more, you will be the last person standing while everybody drops off. You will succeed. My challenge to you is don't give up. Don't take no for an answer. Push through. There are people waiting for you. There are people waiting to hear your story. There are people waiting to learn from you. There are people waiting to grow. And you are doing them an injustice if you quit now. So enough is enough. I share this with you because there are so many entrepreneurs that I coach. There's so many hoping to grow and there's so many that have doubt and imposter syndrome and they're tired and they're exhausted and I do not let my clients quit. I tell them, okay, you get 24 hours and we're back to the drawing board. We're back moving forward. We're done chasing your tail, but I will not let you quit. And I say this to you, whoever's listening to me now, I will not let you quit. Make sure to believe in yourself and don't use your life circumstances as excuses for why you are going to fail. Because if you push through, I promise you, you will succeed. Now it's time to get to work. I want you to make a list of all the excuses and all the reasons you think that things haven't panned out. You don't have enough connection. You don't have a community. Nobody cares. You don't have a voice. You, Your circumstances, you're a single parent, you are orphaned, whatever that is. I want you to think of all the excuses you tell yourself and I want you to write them all down. And then after that, I want you to write down the truth. I want you to write down what you're going to do beyond all those excuses you just wrote. 
I want you to write down how you're going to make your dreams happen despite your circumstances. That is my homework for you. I know many people have asked, so I'm going to share. I do coach entrepreneurs. I coach a handful of them at a time. If you're interested in working with me, you can contact me directly on janmarietlc.com. Again, it's janmarie, J-A-N-M-A-R-I-E, tlc.com. And it will be my honor to work you through and teach you how not to say no, how not to take no for an answer, how to say yes to yourself constantly. I work with a handful of people and if we're a good fit and I have room, I am honored to walk you on this journey. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so excited you tuned in. The best way to find out the second a new episode is released and receive all the valuable tools and actionable steps I share is to subscribe to the podcast. So make sure you do that. If there are any topics you'd like addressed, or if you have any burning questions you want answered, visit jammerietlc.com backslash podcast. And make sure to share this with any other entrepreneur friends that you know can benefit from learning the mindset it takes to create a business and life they truly love. And last but definitely not least, I would love your feedback. So leave a review and I'll make sure to share that love on a future podcast episode. Sending you so much love. Until next time.